In this video, I'm going to tell you a bit about the mixing brushes in the Krita brush pack. These are the pink ones with the little water droplet. Uh, the pink stroke indicates that it's using the dulling mode in the color smudge brush engine. That is this brush engine here in Krita. And the little water droplet is just here to tell you that these brushes are kind of wet and they tend to drag color a little on the canvas. So you have a selection of four brushes to work with. And these ones are designed specifically for the second volume of the Krita training. Basically, they are meant to help you achieve that kind of painterly style you can see on um, Rayman or Ori and the Blind Forest. My favorite one is the flat one, which I use a lot. And just so you understand, the way they work is when you start painting, they sample the color that's on the canvas and they kind of blend it with the color you selected on the wheel. Now, the way it works is simply based on uh, your pen pressure. So if you press lightly, it's going to mostly use color from the canvas. And if you start to press harder on your stylus, it's going to be dry. And that's something that's really important compared to the default brushes or the brushes you can find online. These ones are dry for the most part. Apart from this one, which is, you can see, it's a little more dull and basically uh, it's a bit wet, it's, a, it's really soft. So I specifically designed them so that you can both uh, blend with existing colors on the canvas, but so that you can also paint the outline of a sprite. Even if it's not always recommended, uh, you can paint some really strong strokes and you really have the flexibility to apply thick paint, what we call thick paint on the canvas. So that's just when you paint with real natural media, with acrylic, you generally apply that kind of layer of opaque color at first, and then you start painting on it and you blend a little with lighter brush strokes. These brushes allow you to achieve that. Just to give you an example, I'm going to add some kind of uh, apron to the character in here really quickly. So all the techniques I use to achieve that are explained in the Krita training. Okay, I'm just going to make a selection, pick a blue color. I think this will be a good complementary color in that case. And I just fill and I'm going to erase a little bit on that side. Okay, it's just a simple example. So with this brush, the interesting thing you can do is when you click on Preserve Alpha, you are going to paint, but only inside of that shape, inside of that new layer I just created. So then you can really paint freely and you can already see um, why I made this brush. It's really powerful for that because it blends with the blue color in the back and it really gives you some soft feel when you start to paint your shadows. So I'm going to just quickly paint on my apron in here. Uh, these brushes take quite a bit of time to get used to because you really have to learn to make smooth brush strokes and to kind of master your pressure. Otherwise, they're not going to give you a beautiful result. So you have to train, but yeah. So you can see kind of how they work at a basic level. I'm going to bring in some darker blue in here. Okay. And I'll add some shadows to the character thereafter. One important technique, um, because if you've tried the brush, they tend to make pretty opaque strokes really fast. And if you want to make lighter strokes and to turn them in more of a blending tool, well, you can. You just have to tweak the opacity right here. So you have two default shortcuts in Krita 2.9, uh, which are I, which lowers the opacity by 10%, and O increases the opacity by 10%. If I lower the opacity, you can see straight away that I'm more blending the color on the canvas that I am actually applying. Let me pick a black color and you can see that with a low opacity, 
I'm actually just blending the color on the canvas and I'm not applying my color anymore. I can show you that aside from the character, you can see that I much more easily make very soft brush strokes. And you can also see the color in here uh, can seem a little weird considering that I have some kind of blue here and we're getting purple on the canvas, but that's just how the color mixing brush engine works. It tends to mix my blue with the white that's on the canvas, and this produces some kind of um, really light purple, like, like you can see in here. That's just the algorithm the engine uses for that. But it gives some kind of nice colors, and you can always achieve the precise colors you are looking for by modulating your pen pressure. So let me get back to the character. So that's how I paint. In general, I make really large brush strokes, really strong ones, and then I tweak the opacity to get the exact feel I want um, for blending. You know, I'm going to add a bit of light in here simply because there's some light coming from the top on the character. The maximum shadow should be around here. Okay, and I'm going to lower the opacity to mix softly uh, the pixels on the canvas right here. The last thing I want to do is add some kind of little shadow, contact shadow between the body of the character and the apron in there. And that should be good. And again, I want to add shadow in here too, to make a separation between the holding piece of cloth and the hanging part. And then I'm going back to the character. I'm just going to add some shadow in here with some warm tones. All right. So you can see how fast I can make a painterly looking apron. You know, if we look at the character from afar, which is how it would look in a game, typically. It is the style, the kind of painterly style you want to get in a 2D game, you know. So you can achieve that really easily with those four brushes. Now, as far as which brush you should pick is concerned, let me explain why I made four. The flat one uh, is going to give you some kind of special workflow and special style. It is especially efficient on backgrounds and not so much on characters. I use it a lot simply because it's a style I like. Okay, so it works very well on flat grounds, like on a road for a side-scrolling game, for instance. Next, this one is going to give you a bit more texture in your strokes. It's still really soft, but you can see you have some spikes on the side, and um, if you start to brush lightly to make circles, you are going to get some gaps in your stroke, which is really nice. It gives you really soft results, but at the same time, it gives you character as well. This is a simple round brush, and this one, uh, you will get it in the next brush update. It is not directional anymore, by the way. And uh, this is really some basic, um, it's for basic round styles, like you can see in Blizzard games, for instance, they use those round brushes a lot for the artworks. And this one is just a really soft round brush with which you can do very wet blending. So then you have to experiment with the brushes yourself and see for yourself which one works best for you. These two you can use in conjunction. You can basically use this wet brush in conjunction with any of the other three because it is used for mixing more so than it is used for actually putting paint on the canvas. And in the next version, there will also be a just blending brush that doesn't add any color. That's just here to soften your mix. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll look at the smudge brushes.